Hi, this is Tech again. Today directly from the workshop. Unfortunately, this fan is really loud, so I hope you can hear me. Anyways, I finally managed to get the Asus P5E3 Pro fully modded, or as far as I need it, to try some FSD on it. Uh, as you can see, I'm running the CPU on phase change here, uh, minus 48, on the far right uh, thermometer. Middle multimeter is V-Core and the one on the left is uh, our Northbridge voltage. And let me take off this camera here. You can see P5E3 Pro. Now to get this thing to clock at all I had to uh, basically flash P5E3 Premium BIOS on here. Also, I'm running single channel and I'm not sure if you can see it, it's in, it, it's in the shadow, but I'm going to show you the whole board on the bench later anyways. Uh, I'm running custom copper heatsink on the north bridge, uh, direct dice, so deleted north bridge. Uh, I added a bunch of caps behind it as well. Uh, I basically did everything in my repertoire to try to get this a uh, four layer PCB board to behave at all. Uh, so far with these settings here, I managed to boot 600 FSB finally. Uh, now keep in mind 600 is something uh, any decent X48 ASUS board will do with no mods whatsoever. So I think this should kind of show you how bad this P5E3 Pro really is compared to other ASUS X48 stuff. Anyways, I will uh, try to get a higher score out of this now and I think I will see you back here or back at the bench depending on, thing, on, on how things go. So it crashed at about 6.05. Let's see if we can find anything we could change now. There is an unfortunate thing about this and a modded BIOS. This is 1.9 volts set for V-Core. This is 1.6 in reality. That's one thing and all the other voltages basically do nothing. So we're running completely blind. I'm not even sure what we have on memory at all. So these are my uh, clock skews. Let's up both by one and see if we get any further. Okay, so clock skews did nothing. We still crashed at 606. So next step is more voltage. Let's just turn up our volt mode to like 1.7 on the north bridge. Let's see what, how this does, but well, I already reached my original goal, which was uh, 600, so that's good, I guess. Okay, so... <laughs> This got us to about 6 or 7, but then the board crashed and it doesn't post uh, like stock settings over 1.6 volt north bridge. So this is going to get really annoying. I think the next update will be from the bench and well, just a final summary of what I did to the board and my scores I got out of it. Okay, here we are. Now this is certainly, I would say, the most useless board we had on the bench so far but anyways a few little things I did to it there is a copper heatsink here actually let's take this off so you can see the deleted X48 underneath there uh, now as I mentioned before this board needs a BIOS mod to a P5E3 premium BIOS to clock at all now there is also another slight issue here uh, BIOS chip size the P5E3 premium BIOS is too big for the standard BIOS chip that is on here usually so you have to swap this as well not that I would recommend any of you get this board this is uh, well the worst Asus X48 board in my opinion definitely uh, there might be some uh, DDR2 ones that are worse, but I think there is not because the only two DDR2 ones I know of are the P5E Deluxe and the uh, Rampage Formula, and those are definitely way better than this. Both of them. Uh, anyways, nice little 
deleted x48 here. That's, well, I, I'm not sure how much that actually gained us. There's also some other mods here I replaced. Well, this one is unpopulated on the board when it, like stock board. So I, I added a cap here and replaced these with better ones, brand new ones with 8 million ESR, just to be safe. The back here, uh, I'm not sure if this is going to focus, let's see, yes it does. There is a bunch of MLCCs here, the stock board doesn't have any components on the back, so everything you can see here uh, is what I added to the board in a hope that it would do any something and I, I'm not sure how much of it is pure north bridge voltage because before I was stuck at like 600, uh, 567 FSB but that was with I think 1.4 volts on the north bridge so how much these really gained me I didn't test on this board but I know that they gave me about 5 megahertz on a I think P5 E3 Premium where I replaced the stock ones with better ones. So there's definitely a point in doing this uh, with proper boards. And this I just did it because I was bored and... Well, I, I was uh, under the impression that 600 is basically impossible. So I wanted to give it every chance I could to do 600. Now it did 600 and I'm... Well, I'm going to remove the mods from this board and just put it on eBay. For some retro build or something uh, <laughs> because like as bad as these boards are for overclocking it's still a x48 asus with ddl3 so it's still worth something at least uh, as you can see north bridge vault mod there is also let me show you maybe you can see it i'm not sure if you can let's hope this focuses there is a uh, Right here a resistor piggybacked onto another resistor that is the switching frequency mod. So I upped the switching frequency from about 300 kilohertz to about 520 or 550 uh, for the Northbridge VRM. Now I wouldn't recommend doing it on this board because it had, has those terrible Nikos semiconductor MOSFETs. Uh, but something like a rampage formula or there is a p5e64. I'm, I'm going to do a full full guide on that one like uh, Overview and this mod here There I would definitely re recommend it that they use way better fats on that. So by way better I mean fats with uh, Lower RDS on so basically faster switching uh, MOSFETs With these they get rather hot with the switching frequency mod. So I think before I sell the board, I'm going to remove that one as well. And I'm also putting the lid back on here with some uh, MX5 or KPX or something. And some silicone, I think. Uh, V-Core mod on here. Now, I'm not going to show you the mods as I usually do in the other videos because, well, what is the point in, in, in showing you mods for a board that is uh, I would say beyond pointless because it's not like those are super common and the, the other P5E boards aren't. So it's really just the worst the worst version of the P5E series, the DDR3 ones. So I would say from this there is only, only up. Uh, the next Asus in the list I would say is P5E64. Uh, WS EVO that is mostly because it has single phase Northbridge VRM that it doesn't overtake the P5E3 Premium then P5E3 Premium or Rampage Extreme uh, those two can be swapped around depending on if you're running 65 nanometer or 45 nanometer basically for 45 nanometer Rampage Extreme is better for 65 the P5E3 Premium anyways I think that's that's about it about this board. Uh, again, the reason why this board is so garbage is because it has a four layer PCB. I found that out after purchasing it. Let's see if we find the... Where's the layer counter? I swear it was in one of these corners. Can't see it right now. Interesting. Oh, here it is. Okay, if I barely can see it, you probably won't be able to see it at all. 
Let's see if this focuses. I don't think so. Maybe with my hand in the background. Come on. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there is a, a very faint four up here. So this is four layer PCB, which means it has two layers less than any of the other boards and four layers less than the Rampage Extreme and the uh, WS Evo. So yeah, that, that I basically purchased the board because I thought it was just like stripped down P5E3 Premium and I could just uh, like flash P5E3 Premium BIOS and go. But unfortunately I'm still held back by the four layer PCB and there is probably no way to uh, find a way around that. So my recommendation, don't buy, just stay away from the Pro, save your money for something like a WS EVO or a P5E3 Premium or even a P5E3 Deluxe that's X38 and even that one performs better when, when BIOS modded and well this also needs volt mods. So it's basically you got the same hassle as with this one but you've got the board with a 6 layer PCB afterwards that is going to actually clock better than this. Anyways, I think that's about it for the little overclocking update on the, the worst Asus X48 board. Bye.